I love the idea that Pop Junk Club is small. Happy kami kung ano lang yung kaya namin now. Kasi it's working for us. Um, we are able to manage it better and also manage common room at the same time. We're scaling at a good pace na wala rin kaming nasasaya. I'm Roma Agsunod. I'm an Agsalud of Pop Chunk Club. We're the makers of Pop Chunk Club. We make handmade plushies, toys, and anything and everything cute. Kaya siya Pop Chunk Club kasi parang things that are uh, very popular sa pop culture. Kaya siya pop. Tapos junk kasi yun nga, a lot of the things that we do are upcycled or mga recycled. And then love kasi love kasi hard. Hindi, joke lang. <laughs> De, kasi we really do things that we really like. Lahat ng mga stuff na ginagawa namin or things that interest us or things that we really love to do. Kaya siya pop junk love. Started pop junk love in 2007 and we were breadwinners. That's why we decided, okay, let's start a business. So initially, sabi namin, dapat related to clothes and fashion. But naisip namin, parang we didn't have the money to have original clothes made. Kasi kailangan, syempre, may minimum quantity yun, ganyan. I think around 5,000 lang yung <laughs> initial seed money namin or capital. What did we had at the time? We had a lot of scrap. We had a lot of toys that we can reuse and make into accessories. We only had 5,000 pesos, so yun lang yung konting raw materials na pwede namin yeah. mabili. So that's how we started with the business. Not yeah. really, this is the product that we wanted to make, and then let's do it. Let's, yeah. let's pursue our passion. <laughs> hindi, hindi kami ganun, parang, okay, ano lang kasi sa budget, doon tayo magsimula. <laughs> so that's how we started Pop Junk Club, yeah. making toys, pins, brooches, accessories made from scrap. Yun yung may surplus kami of items. Yun din yung may capacity kami to make. Uh -oh. Kasi hindi naman kami like painters mm -hmm. or we didn't have background naman in designing talaga and all. So parang putting the beads together was like, ano siya, madali lang siya gawin. <laughs> feels manageable yeah, para sa skills namin. Uh, kaya naman natin mag... Tusok-tusok ng mga beads together. Kaya naman natin mag-ribbon. Kaya naman natin mag-glue together ng mga items. So, pwede na yan. Let's see what we can make. Allergic kami sa mga wastage. <laughs> so, yung mga maliliit na mga dolls namin or mga keychains or actually mga surplus na mga tela-tela. Yung mga pag namin to tapos may mga excess sa gilid-gilid, we try to keep them and make them into something. Kaya meron kami mga small items na sabi, -sabi nga ni Atro, mas, mas time consuming magtahi ng maliliit. Mm -hmm. Pero sayang kasi yung felt na natira or yung tela na natira. So, mag-iisip kami na, ano may magagawa natin sa mga, mga leftover na material? So, gagawa kami ng mga cord bundlers, smaller versions of the plushies, mga keychain. I remember before na kami talaga yung tatahi ng mga details ng mga mata-mata. So, after our work, kailangan naming mag-OT for the dolls kasi may bazaar kami ng weekend. So, kailangan naming magtahi para meron kaming stocks. So, yung mga customers, bibili sa namin parang, oh, oh order ko ng 20 pieces. So, parang kami, thank you, pero oh, paano natin tatahi niyo ng 20 pieces na ganyan? Eventually, we started losing opportunities na kasi hindi na talaga namin kaya. And mm. dumating sa point that we're just producing old designs. Hindi kami nakaka-produce ng bago, bago kasi we're stuck doing the orders <laughs> of the, the old stitching. collections. So dumating sa point na nawala na kami ng mga opportunities dahil hindi na namin kaya tanggapin. And that was a signal for us na, okay, we really need to her help and that's when we started looking for sewers and house sewers it attracts more opportunities for mm -hmm. you kasi kaya mo na siya tapos biglang may darating na hindi mo ulit kaya so kailangan mo ulit magdagdag i remember though na we were a bit reluctant in getting sewers kasi feeling namin eh yung ibabayad natin sa kanila si save na lang natin and all kaya naman natin pero na realize namin na May limit talaga yung pwede namin gawin on our own. Kasi there was a time na nagtatahi kami mismo sa bazaar para lang may ma-display. Tapos biglang pagka-display namin, biglang binili. Tapos so parang, oh no, wala na naman tayong ibibenta. 
<laughs> we thank the pandemic for that. <laughs> it came to a point that we didn't like customizing dolls anymore kasi nakakapagod siya. Mm. So every time someone orders, it's a new pattern and then it's just one doll. It's something that we can't remake. Yeah. So everything needs to be standardized. So natuto akong mag-procreate so that I can before kasi I used to create the patterns mismo tapos gugupitin ko sa karton. So kaya yung mga kamay ko ang dami ng kalyo kasi karton talaga siya. Tapos talagang sipat lang talaga. Okay, ganito ito. Gawin mo pattern. Pagdating nung pandemic, hindi kaya kasi hindi ko masabi sa staff ko kung paano gagawin to. Hindi ko mabigay yung pattern, etc. Kasi hindi pa naman ganun ka okay yung logistics ng grab, etc. before. So I had to learn to do digital. And then mm-hmm. eventually, we had standard patterns now for the clothes, for the eyes. We stuck with this system na... It worked for us, kaya makikita nyo mayroon na siyang standard look. We don't mm. usually accept na anything that will go beyond our standard look now. So, we're happy with how it looks kasi it ended up, we have a pop junk love look na. Parang naging signature look, look na, na siya ng dolls namin. And we're very happy with it kasi it's nice na parang we have an ownable look and it's sustainable kasi it's easy to replicate. What's nice about having our own signature look is that we attract people who likes our signature look. So every time may papakita sila, sasabihin namin, ito yung look. Sasabihin nila, that's why we wanted to get a custom doll because we wanted that look. So, nagkaroon ng ganun na attraction to people who really like how we do things, yeah. how we make the dolls. nahirapan kami. Kasi it has a different look mm-hmm. than a factory-made doll. Iba talaga yung hinawakan ng kamay. Eh. Mm-hmm. Iba yung talagang machine-made. Mm-hmm. Kaya we also stuck with our signature way of sewing the details of the dolls. Makikita nyo, parang malalaki Until pa rin siyang crochet. Yeah. Because we wanted to let our customers know that these were made by hand, yeah. hindi lang siya machine. Kasi merong factory made, maraming mga ma- mass-produced dolls, pero konti lang yung handmade dolls. It's because it's really hard work. Time-consuming talaga <laughs> hindi siya. Hindi It's not like as easy as printing stickers, etc. Hindi siya ganun kadali. And even if you make keychain versions, magnet versions, cord bonder versions of the dust that we make, it's still super time-consuming na yeah. wala talagang in their right heads will do it. <laughs> Kasi <laughs> medyo mahirap talaga. Yeah. Yung advantage namin is because they're handmade, they're like limited edition siya and a lot of them are customized. I mean, if you want something customized, you can't go to a big factory. Kasi lahat sila may minimum order of 5,000 units. May mga ganun, di ba? So, it's, it's more personal in that way. And you know na yung ginawang yun, ikaw lang yung may ganun. For example, these dolls, parang it's been in circulation for a very long time. But we can't say na may 1 million na tayo. No, <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. Di ba? So, yun. Parang may, may novelty yung feeling na konte lang yung may ganon and it's one of a kind or it's made personalized for me or customized for my friend or my family or my loved one. So I think it's not a disadvantage na we can't mass produce. Tumatanda yung doll with them na umaabot nung mag-girlfriend pa lang sila tapos yung doll nandun sa wedding nila tapos sa wedding nila na nasa anak na nila. So makikita mo nakasama nila sa journey yung doll because they are the only ones who have that doll and mas special sa kanila kumpara siguro kung mass produce yun na nakita lang nila off the rack and then I'm going to buy it. Iba pa rin yung stories na, na si share nila just because they feel special enough that I am the only one who has this doll. So yung mga stories na binibigay nila sa amin, yung pagtag ng photos, ibang level din. Kasi alam mo that we gave them something really special. So the way they treat their dolls over the years is really special. Alam mo yung mga k-drama plushies na request sa amin, makikita mo nasa parang may altar level. Nandun sila, I mean decor level sila sa mga rooms. Kasi ganun siya ka meaningful and significant for the person. Ang ganda lang na parang we're part of their passion. It 
will take time. <laughs> Yeah. Kailangan mo tandaan that it will take time. That it's not going to be an overnight success. Kasi baka dumating sa point na parang wala naman nangyayari sa akin. Mm-hmm. Parang why am I still doing it? Maybe because I don't have it in me. Maybe because I'm a failure. You Parang you take the business so personal because it's your passion. Siyempre, if it doesn't work out, it feels like it's because of you. Pero really, it just takes time. And every failure, you can view it as a learning experience for you. And the reason kung bakit hindi mo pa nakuha yung gusto mong makuha ngayon is because you need to learn the lesson first so that you wouldn't do it again in the future. So that mistake makes you a better maker, a better entrepreneur. And it really takes time. Katulad nga, kami ni Maan, 15 years na, di ba? Ang tagal na, natry na namin lahat ng bazaar pumalpak na kami sa lahat ng bazar, nagsayang na kami ng maraming pera sa mga maling pinagkakagawa namin before. Pero, we didn't stop. Sometimes, people are not doing it because they feel like wala akong ganito, wala akong ganito. They're focusing on the things that they don't have, which is okay, totoo, marami tayong wala. Like kami ni Maan, we didn't have the capital at the start. We didn't have the know-how. The know-how. <laughs> we were not business. Uh, we didn't have a business background. Marami kaming wala. Pero what we did is we focus on the things that we did have and what did we do with the things that we had at the time. And that's how we started Pop Chunk Club. Merong kang, alam mong, kinikilig ka or masaya ka, sundan mo yun because it's probably telling you something. A lot of the designs that we have are things that we just really like. <laughs> like, alam mo yun? Oh, oh. Masaya ka kasi ginawa mo siya for yourself. Yung excitement mo, yung interest mo on something, it will fuel you eh mm-hmm. to push through even if may mga challenges. Tsaka nakakawala ng pagod. There's beauty talaga in being small. Kasi right now, there's pressure na rin eh, di ba? There's pressure in pop junk love, there's pressure in common room, there's pe- pressure in in balancing everything already at this point of our level na small pa lang, di ba? If you don't know, from pop junk love, we were able to build a community called Common Room and parang we owe a lot to this business na from this business, we were able to share a retail space with a lot of other artists and crafters. Yeah. We have a good life. <laughs> yung mga essentials namin na, alam mo yun, parang we have orders, we get to cater to our customers, may may orders na pumapasok so we can sustain our mga mananahe, di ba? We're not overproducing to the point na sayang yung dolls or sayang yung investment sa materials kasi gumawa kami na marami tapos hindi naman siya nabenta. Alam mo yun, parang we're scaling at a good pace na wala rin kaming nasasayang. So, which is good. We love being small. Now we love telling them that it's limited. Na kayo lang yung meron ganon. Parang ang sarap lang. Parang we don't necessarily equate bigness to success. So feeling namin, even at our small little space, we're very successful at what we do. So yeah, we're we're happy being small.